Yes, I'm live now. Welcome once again to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. Am I audible? Is this? Okay, so in this YouTube session here I will be discussing the PYQs of Karnataka set that is K set. Do join quickly and this is the previous year question paper and I will be discussing with analysis as well do join good evening everyone yeah it's okay it's okay Please make sure to subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification and to stay updated please do join the telegram channel that is Santu Sahu UGC net. So we are going to discuss this previous paper that is from KSET. Okay, so let's begin without wasting your time. Here is the first question. I think this PDF is clearly visible to everyone and I am also audible to everyone. So let's begin the session. Here is the first question. You can answer in the comment box as well. Do like the session, share with your friends with as well. Okay, so the first question is that which character is just a minute. Okay, so which character is ironically described as a noble pillar of his order in the Canterbury Tales. It is actually in the general product to the Canterbury Tales where one of these characters okay, has been described as a noble pillar of his order. Your options are Miller, Pardoner, Friar, Summoner. What would be the right answer here? Here the right answer is actually the C. C that is Friar. Friar is actually represented as a noble pillar is a noble pillar of his order so he is actually a mercenary figure he, but he is actually a mercenary hmm, which focusing only on money focusing only on money and this is actually uh, this is actually a complete full of satire complete use of irony okay in this general product the Canterbury Tales and uh, Chaucer's purpose was actually to criticize the medieval society. Its purpose was to criticize the medieval society. Here, Friar is actually represented as a noble pillar of his order. It is actually a uh, satire uh, because he was a mercenary figure who only focused on money. So, Friar is the right answer. Okay. William Caxton was a dramatist, actor, a poet, and knight a printer, publisher and translator and explorer. William Caxton, you all know, uh, from he was an English printer, publisher and translator and he was the first person to introduce printers into England, into England uh, in 1476. In 1476. So here William Caxton, was a pre, uh, he was a printer, he was a publisher, he was a diplomat, translator who introduced for the first time printer in the year 1476 in England. So here C is the right answer. Okay. Now the Pearl is a medieval poem that is a late uh, 14th century poem. Satire. It's a satire. It's a dream vision. It's a romance. It's a morality play. So Pearl is actually, you know, it is an allegorical poem, a dream vision uh, where the Pearl, there is a conversation, there is a dialogue between Pearl and the narrator even there is a description of what new jerusalem so here we have a three uh, alleged alternative poetry that is pearl purity and patience okay pearl purity and patience so one of them is the pearl pearl is actually a medieval dream vision it's an allegorical poem alliterative allegory it's an alliterative as well alliterative allegorical and and it's uh, it's dream vision Okay, where uh, Paul is actually a character. Paul is talking with uh, the narrator 
and in this uh, poem we also find uh, that the description of new jerusalem is also given here and when the narrator is waking up so he had a dream vision is the right answer okay 14 brass is who is 14 brass in hamlet the tragedy a uh, university friend of hamlet ophelia's brother uh, the prince of norway a courtier so 14 brass uh, in hamlet is actually the prince of norway so c is the right answer and he is actually representing a foil okay is a fictional character and he also delivers the last lines okay the last speech were delivered by fortin brush he is actually representing as a foil to prince hamlet as well uh, because he wishes to attack denmark to avenge his father's honor so here the prince of norway is fortin brush hmm. minor fictional character in the tragedy hamlet who was the foil of hamlet so here C is the right answer. Okay, now moving ahead to question number five here. In Dryden's poem, Achitophel is a sad well, is sad well, Shaftesbury, Duke of Monmouth. Then you have Guy Fox. So Achitophel is actually Earl of Shaftesbury, first Earl of Shaftesbury, whose real name, what was the real name? It's Anthony Ashley Cooper. His real name was actually Anthony Ashley. Cooper. Okay. He was the first Earl of Shaftesbury. So, Achitophel, we have the poem Absalom and Achitophel. It's a satirical poem published in 1681. Published in 1681, satirical poem. And even there is the uh, story of Bible. Okay. It is alluding the story of Bible where uh, the rebellion of Absalom. Okay. It's the rebellion of Absalom and King David. Okay. So, it's an allegorical poem contemporary to Dryden's work concerning Charles the second here uh, it is actually David is Charles the second and even this is the in this work we find the reference of the exclu exclusion crisis as well as a uh, poppy's plot poppy's plot and exclusion crisis okay reference of this and even here you see acetophen that is Anthony Ashley Cooper is actually a founder of weak party so and we have uh, Duke of Monmouth. Absalom is actually Duke of Monmouth, whereas Achitophel is Earl of Shaftesbury. Duke of Monmouth is Absalom. Okay, remember that. Absalom is Duke of Monmouth, whereas Achitophel is Earl of Shaftesbury. Okay, now moving on to six, question number six here. Yeah. The Robber is a play by, uh, it's a Sheridan, William Congreve, Afra Ben, William Wycherley. Uh, the Robber, Robber is actually a play by Afra Ben. Afra Ben has written this work and it's Subtitle is actually the Banished Cavaliers. Okay. The Banished Cavaliers is the subtitle of this work. The Banished Cavaliers is the subtitle of this work. Hmm. Remember that the Banished Cavaliers is actually hmm, the subtitle of this work. And here it's written by Afra Ben. And it has actually two parts. Okay. Even this work is actually revision of Thomas Killigrew's work Thomaso. So the rover by uh, will uh, by Afra Ben is actually revision of Thomas Killigrew's play Thomaso or the Wanderer published in 1664. So here Afra Ben is the right answer. Moving on to here question number seven. I as wife spouse my dear joy jewel sweetheart and the rest of that nauseous kind in which men and their wives are so fulsomely familiar. These lines appear in the school for scandal, she stoops to can, uh, conquer, Lady Windmere's fan and way of the world. So actually these lines are spoken in act 4, scene 5 of the way of the world where actually Milamand is speaking these lines to Mirabel. It's Milamand. It's Milamand is actually speaking to whom? It's Mirabel. Okay. In which scene? It is in act 5, uh, in act 4, in act 4, scene 5. Okay, Act 4, Scene 5. Here it is Milamand is actually are speaking, uh, it's speaking these lines to whom? Mirabel. And the way of the world is the right answer here. Published in 1700, you know by who wrote? It's Congreve. And School for Scandal, it's, Robert, it's, it's, it's Sheridan. It's Richard Sheridan has written. The School for Scandal, whereas she stooped to conquer is by Oliver Goldsmith and Lady Windmere's fan is by Oscar Wilde. The School for Scandal is a work by 
Richard Sheridan, she stoops to conquer is a work by Oliver Goldsmith, whereas The Lady Winmaid's Fan is a work by uh, Oscar Wilde, and The Way of the World is a work by the famous restoration dramatist here, uh, Congreve, published in 1700, where Milamend is saying this lands to Mirabel. Okay, here now, question number 8. If they be two, they are two so. At steep with twin compasses are two these lands appear in. The canonization, a valediction, forbidden murdering, death be not proud, the flea. Okay, so this actually an implied comparison. This is actually an implied comparison that is metaphysical conceit. It's a metaphor, uh, implied comparison between two dissimilar uh, subjects. The lovers are compared with a pair of compass. Okay, they are joined together at the top. So, these uh, lines appear in a valediction forbidden mourning by, by whom? It's by uh, John Dunn. So, here a valediction forbidden mourning is the right answer. Okay? Here it is an extended metaphor. It's an extended metaphor. Two dissimilar things are, uh, two dis dis dissimilar things are compared here. There is an implied comparison between two dissimilar things, like the two couple of lovers, uh, couple of lovers actually are compared with, uh, com uh, compared with compass here, a pair of compass, and that are joined together at the top. So a valediction, forbidden mourning is the right answer by Dunn. Here is question number nine. The character Sir Giles Overreach appears in. The city madam, women beware women, a new way to pay old debts, and Antonio's revenge. Okay, so Sir Giles Overreach is a uh, is a work, and uh, is a character from New Way to Pay Old Debts. It's by Philip Roth. It's by Philip Roth. Philip uh, Philip Messenger, sorry, Philip Messenger has written this work, a new way to pay old debts. Even the city madam. Is also a work by the city madam is also a work by uh, Philip Massinger. Okay, now women beware women. Will you please tell me who wrote women beware women? Women beware women is a work by whom? Any idea? It's a work uh, by Thomas Middleton. Thomas Middleton has written women beware women. Thomas Middleton, whereas Antonio's Revenge is a work by John Marston. John Marston has written this work, Antonio's Revenge. Okay, the city madam and a new way to pay old debts. These are works by Philip Messenger, where uh, uh, whereas Sir Giles Overridge is a character from a new way to pay old debts. Okay, now you have uh, which description of Robinson Crusoe? You all know Robinson Crusoe here, Defus, Daniel Defus, uh, Robinson Crusoe is correct, a historical novel. An official novel, a novel about colonization, it's a gothic novel. So, as per this description, it's actually a novel about colonization. Even the form of this Robinson Crusoe is actually epistolary. Okay, it can be also epistolary because the form of this novel was epistolary. It was epistolary, it was confessional, it was epistolary, it was confessional as well as as well as uh, didactic form. Okay, didactic form. Okay, epistolary confessional didactic form. But as per the question. Here, I think it's the novel about colonizations, okay. But the form of the novel was epistolary, confessional, didactic. Okay, remember that. Now, we have question number 11 here. John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress. John Locke, Religio Medici. Identify the right pair. So, first one, John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress is the right pair. And you all know that Pilgrim's Progress has two parts. First part was published in 1679 and the second part uh, was published in 1684. Okay, it's a Christian allegory. It's a Christian allegory, 1617 and 1684. Whereas, Religio Medici is a work by Thomas Brown. It's not by John Locke, it's by Thomas Brown. And uh, here, we have the anatomy of melancholy. It's by Robert Barton. It's a Robert Barton. Whereas, Lives of the Poets, you all know, it's by Samuel Johnson. Okay. Now, here is 12. The Female Quixote by Charlotte Lennox, a novel written by Charlotte Lennox, that is true. It's a parody of Michael de Cervantes' Don Quixote, that is true. It was also written in 1752. So, first three options are right, actually, whereas a novel in which Camilla is the heroine. No, 
कैमिला इज अ वार्क बाई कैमिला इज अ वार्क बाई हुम कैमिला इज अ नॉवेल इज एक्चुअली बाई फ्रांसिस बर्नी कैमिला इज एक्चुअली नॉवेल बाई फ्रांसिस बर्नी एंड इट्स टाइटल इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ द यूथ पिक्चर ऑफ द यूथ ओके दिस इज द फुल टाइटल ऑफ दिस नॉवेल एंड इट्स अ वार्क बाई फ्रांसिस फ्रांसिस बर्नी ठीक है इट्स अ वर्क बाई फ्रांसिस बर्नी सो हेयर फोर इज नॉट द राइट ऑप्शन सो वी हैव वन टू थ्री एंड करेक्ट सो सी इज द राइट ऑप्शन कैमिला पिक्चर ऑफ द यूट इज अ वर्क बाई फ्रांसिस बर्नी हाई बाबू ओके सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग हेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग द पी वाई क्यूज ऑफ कर्नाटक सेट ओके यू कैन आंसर हेयर गॉड इट कैमिला इज एक्चुअली हीरोइन ऑफ दिस नॉवल Uh, that is by Francis Burney, Camilla, a picture of the youth. Francis Burney, got it? Good evening, Babu. Chalo, we have discussed twelve question yet. Now here is question number thirteen. Keep answering. In Jonathan Swift's The Battle of the Books, modern writers are represented by the bee, the wasp, the spider, the crab. So the Battle of the Books, you all know, uh, is actually a short. No, 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 no. I was not able actually. So it is actually here. Published Battle of the Books published in seventeen zero seventeen zero four. I had some work actually. So it's seventeen zero four. Ah, uh, where we find that that there is the battle between the ancient and the moderns. There is the battle between the ancient and the moderns. Okay. Have you have you given so ancient and the moderns here uh, the modern writers are represented by uh, spider the moderns ancient versus moderns here uh, the battle of the books modern writers are represented by what modern writers are represented by the spider so here C is the right answer it is short satire published in seventeen zero four battle of the books by Swift chalo. Modern writers are represented by the spider. Hmm. Remember that. Well done. Chalo. Here is question number fourteen. Where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. Appears in Thomas Gray's *Elegy*, written in a country churchyard. Him to adversity, ode on Eton College, ode on a uh, on a favorite cat. Okay. So this is a proverb. Where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. Appears in Thomas Gray's in which work? Any idea? It's again C. Exactly. It's again C. Ode on. No, 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 no. It's not A. I think. Ha. Uh, everybody will answer like that. I hope that it's on Ode on Eton College. Now, what is the full form? A full name of this uh, poem is Ode on. Elegy. I uh, got it. It's not Elegy actually. Ode on a distant prospect of Eton College. The full name of this work is Ode on a distant prospect of Eton College. Okay, so this is the full uh, name of this uh, poem. Ode on Eton College is the right answer. And this is a 1742 published in 1742 published in 1742 1742 work. Remember that, okay? Don't make mistake. So negative capability is a writer's ability. Okay, you all know this phrase was coined by kids. What is the ability? What is being referred as negative capability? To look at the darker side of experience, to avoid imitation of others, or to merge himself with tradition, or to keep out self, to keep out his self from his from his writing. Okay. To keep out his self from his writing. What is negative capability? Negative capability is actually to to keep out his self from his writing. Okay, that is negative capability. D is the right answer. Kids, negative capability. It's D is the right answer. Got it? Now here is now. Question number. In which poem, Coldrich, do we see 
द रोमांटिक इमेज ऑफ द पोइट फ्रॉस्ट नो नो ट्रेडिशन तो नहीं होगा टू मार्ज हिमसेल्फ विद ट्रेडिशन नो 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 इट्स टू कीप आउट हिज सेल्फ फ्रॉम हिज राइटिंग ओके सो रोमांटिक फ्रॉस्ट एट मिड नाइट कुगला खान द एंशियन मेरीनर क्रिस्टबल इन विच पोएम बाई कोल्ड इज डू सी द रोमांटिक इमेज ऑफ द पोएट इट इच कुबला खान इट्स कुबला खान इज द रेंड सो द फ्रैगमेंटेड पोएम फ्रैगमेंटेड पोएम कुबला खान इज द राइट आंसर ओके रोमांटिक इमेज ऑफ द पोएट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द पोएट एंड कुबला खान इज द राइट आंसर चलो ओके वॉट वॉज द ऑरिजिनल टाइटल ऑफ जेन ऑस्टन प्राइड एंड प्रेजिडिस सो दैट वॉज पब्लिश इन एटीन थर्टीन यू ऑल नो फास्ट वर्क इज सेंस एंड सेंसिबिलिटी पब्लिश इन एटीन इलेवन फास्ट वर्क ऑफ जेन ऑस्टन इज एटीन इलेवन पब्लिश इन दैट इज सेंस एंड सेंसिबिलिटी पब्लिश इन एटीन इलेवन एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड वर्क प्राइड एंड प्रेजिडिस वॉट वॉज द वर्किंग टाइटल ऑफ जेन ऑस्टन प्राइड एंड प्रेजिडिस फॉल्स इंप्रेशन फास्ट इंप्रेशन फ्लिटिंग इंप्रेशन फाइन इंप्रेशन so here it is actually fast impression okay go excellent excellent yeah its fast impression is the right answer very good well done okay the living power and prime agent of all human perception exactly babu got it the living power and prime agent of all human perception this is coldrich's definition of the creative imagination primary imagination secondary imagination fancy i think in chapter 13 He has given this. I think it's chapter thirteen. एक बार चेक कर लेना ठीक है. I think it is in chapter thirteen. So here he is giving uh, the the definition of primary imagination. Second, here it is the primary imagination is the right answer. The living power and prime agent of all human perception is primary imagination. I think in biography literature chapter thirteen. एक बार चेक करना है. Chapter कितना है? Thirteen probably. जो भी है. एक बार चेक कर लेना ठीक है. It's chapter thirteen probably. एक बार चेक कर लेन. Share. Which one of the following essay is not written by Charles Lamb? Is not written by Charles Lamb on murder considered as one of the fine? Uh, exactly, its primary imagination. Got it. Got it. On murder considered as one of the fine arts. Dream children are dejection upon a roast pig. Then you have the South Sea House. So, uh, dream children. You all know Charles Lamb. The South Sea House. These are two popular. a uh, essay by charles lamb the south sea house and the dream children whereas that our dissertation upon roast pig is also a essay is also an essay uh, by charles lamb now tell me yeah got it babu excellent now tell me who wrote this essay here on murder considered as one of the fine arts it is a work by an essay by thomas de quincy thomas de quincy has written this essay thomas de quincy has written this essay that is on murder considered as one of the fine arts got it now here is question number 20 okay 20 is here and rat clips the mystery of the mysteries of udolpho is he one quickly answer and rat clips mysteries of udolpho is an epistolary novel a romance a gothic novel a domestic novel is he one quickly do answer here it is a gothic novel do not Want to waste your time? It's a gothic novel. Everybody will be able to answer this question. Now moving on to twenty one here. Chalo here. Look. Okay. Every question we have done in my previous sections. Okay. I see that. I see that. Uh, there are hundred question. I found that probably ninety question I have done it earlier. Okay. In my YouTube channel. Okay. So it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. This is the famous beginning of. Hard times, a tale of two cities, or Oliver Twist's great expectations. Okay, so this is ah uh, you all know that is ah uh, big that is the beginning of it is the base stop time it was the old stop time is it hard times? It's twenty here it's twenty one twenty one yeah got it now here is twenty one Babu Gothic got it now here is twenty one. so two cities are mentioned here london and paris a tale of two cities so it is a tale of two cities actually is the right answer it was the best of time it was the worst of time this is the famous beginning of a tale of two cities where two cities are london and paris are mentioned and its background is its background is french revolution it backgrounds is French Revolution. चलो 
डॉक्टर मैनेड इज द डॉक्टर मैनेड इज वन ऑफ द कैरेक्टर चलो द ऑथर ऑफ सोनेट्स फ्रॉम द पुर्तुगीज ओके मेरी सेली एलिजाबेथ बैरड ब्राउनिंग आफ्रा बेन इमिली ब्रॉन्टी द ऑथर ऑफ सोनेट्स फ्रॉम द पुर्तुगीज इज अ वर्क बाय सी इज राइटिंग सी इज राइटिंग इन दिस सिडोनिम सोनेट्स फ्रॉम पुर्तुगीज हियर इट्स एक्चुअली एलिजाबेथ बैरड ब्राउनिंग ओके एलिजाथ बैरड ब्राउनिंग इज राइटिंग सी दिस राइटिंग इन दिस सिडोनिम ओके सिली नॉवेल्स बाय लेडी नॉवेलिस्ट वाच एन एस से रिटन बाई जॉर्ज इलियड बाई लेडी नॉवेलिस्ट जॉर्ज मेयरडिप थमस कलाइन एंथनी ट्रोलॉपी सिली नॉवेल्स बाय लेडी नॉवेलिस्ट वाच एन एस से बाई हूम दिस इज एन एस से बाई जॉर्ज इलियड दैट इज मैरी मैरी एन इवेंट्स ओके सिली नॉवेल्स बाय द Lady novelist was an essay by George Eliot. Twenty-three A is the right answer. Got it, got it, got it. Excellent, Babu. Okay. Now this is an important thing. Who used Jeremy Bentham's concept panopticon? Okay. Cell. Gel. Banana. Hai. Okay. it is michel fuko okay michel fuko is taking the example of jeremy bentham's concept panopticon michel fuko okay here michel fuko is the right answer Look back in anger, the tired against the working classes, the establishment, war mongering. Okay. This question is asked this time in UGC net. Okay. Hmm. Got it. Hmm. So look back in anger is a tired against the establishment. Published in nineteen, performed in nineteen fifty six. Here, Jimmy Potter. So it is actually not working class; it is middle class. Okay, the grow of the the growing of industrialization and uh, against the bourgeois, the bourgeoisies. Okay. so the establishment is the right answer t s elliot's murder in the cathedral is about an incident in new england the conflict between the church and the state killing of a missionary in africa violence in 20th century it is actually a conflict between the church and the state conflict between the church and the state t s elliot's murder in the cathedral is about the conflict between the church and the state okay let me let me end it here uh, babu we will do tomorrow theek hai we'll complete this series tomorrow what it let me end it here we'll do it tomorrow theek hai tomorrow we'll do it okay good night babu hmm we'll do it tomorrow thank you